Hey guys, welcome to the video. Um, just a quick summary here of how things have been going over the last week. Last week they went very, very poorly. Um, we sort of got a little bit ahead of ourselves. We uh, kind of thought we were going to do better than we actually eventually did um, at 25 NL. So we have in fact dropped down now to 10 NL. Um, we've been playing some 10 NL Zoom games and instantly it just felt so much better confidence started to grow pretty quickly um yeah a lot more people obviously like to pay you off as you stop drop, dropping down the stakes and it's done wonders to my confidence as well um so how are we doing overall at the moment we are looking at 213 dollars and 80 cents up now and the bankroll is currently $1,078.10 and now we're going to be trying out 25 and L again but this time around we're going to be doing it in the zoom games um, we'll just see how it feels see how it goes typically the zoom games are actually much tougher than the regular speed tables because I always found that I think the the fish like to sit down at games where they sort of can go oh yeah I can feel out my opponent at least they think they are and uh, then proceed to just give all their money away over and over again um, but the zoom games there's still a lot of um, fish like to sit down now and again the strategy is a little bit different um, for, for example I find myself three betting a lot more because people just don't defend enough against three bets um, four betting can be quite lucrative as well because the population nobody four bets so when you do four bet everyone always thinks oh he's got aces and kings up fold so you can just sort of get away with murder to be honest obviously you don't want to like go over the top but you can certainly get away with a lot of, a lot of four betting um, yeah, but I don't want this video to be too long. I think the last one was not what we were aiming for, 22 minutes, I think that was a bit long. Um, and now we're going to take a little look at a, maybe a couple of hands from um, the week that's happened so far and hope that next week it continues on the same trend and 25 and L Zoom goes a lot better for us than the regular speed tables did. But I do think that there's a lot of variance involved. There's also a lot of um, poor decision maybe maybe some poor decisions at certain times and playing when I shouldn't be playing when I'm tired, for example. Um, but we've done a lot of good study over the last week as well. We've um, been looking at uh, three bet pots, especially mainly just big blind three bet against the button is what I've been running my simulations on. Um, I've actually ran it across a subset of 85 flops and I found a better way of studying now as well. It involves taking a guess at what I think is going to be um, like the C betting ranges, the bet sizes, and then I just have a quick look at what they actually are and see how I fared against it. Um, and that's working really well. It's made me, when I'm in three bet pots, make me realize, okay, in this sort of spot, we should probably be checking a bit more in a spot. We could be going a little bit ham. Um, and just overall understanding the game a lot better rather than sort of just getting to a flop of, say, queen, queen, 10 in a three bet pot where and I'm sort of like, oh, with ace king, I'm sort of like, mm, I don't know, do I bet, do I check, what do I do? Um, it's kind of nicer to just have a clear cut plan. Okay, this is what we do. This is how we're going to do it. And I think in the long run, it's going to help us a lot with if we decide to go back to the reg speed tables, because obviously on the Zoom, when you're just on four tables, it's quite easy to keep track of the action. But I think when we go back to regular speed tables, it might open up the door to being able to play on lots more tables at the same time. Because I actually have two monitors currently, and I have another one that I've just set to one side because I'm not even using it. Um, because I found that whenever I was on more than, say, eight tables, I just started losing track of the action, and I just started making mistakes, and it just wasn't profitable for me in the end. Um, it's not really the case with tournaments. Tournaments was okay because tournaments I do find just ABC is just so click, 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 click. It's very difficult to get lost. Um, but cash games, I do find that you find yourself in a lot of precarious spots in, against opponents that are keeping an eye on what you're doing. So you're playing with the same people over and over again. So you've got to be a lot more careful than you do in tournaments where obviously you could just get moved from a, to a different table anyway. Um, yeah, but that's uh, how things have been going. So obviously I think that the GTO will lead to me having a clear cut plan for certain boards and my brain um, when my eyes flick across to a table it'd be a case of all right cool yeah this bot yeah bet this much yep yeah, yep yeah. and it would just be much smoother and transition between the different tables and i won't have to like take extra time to think through what i'm doing um yeah but let's take a look at some hands now thanks guys so first up we have eight seven of clubs and we've been three bet from the button unfortunately the guy is fairly short stacked but we're going to go ahead and make a call anyway uh, we're going to check it over to him. We do flop an open-ended straight draw, which is very, very nice. Typically, when people are short stacked, they are usually a bit of a weaker player. So I'd make this establishment and I click call. And basically, if I hit, I feel like I'm going to get absolutely everything from this fellow. 
because I feel like he just won't let go. And he does go ahead and shove, and we click the call button with the nuts, and he's drawing dead, which is always good fun. And I uh, am salty as ever, and I just put the goodbye meme, which I think is just absolutely perfect for this situation. Into another hand here, uh, just about managed to spot there that we've just been four bet from the small blind into the big blind. Uh, we have aces, we don't want to shove, give him a reason to fold, so we just call. He bets about a quarter pot with 16 big blinds into 46. Uh, we're definitely just going to be calling here. No need, no reason to raise. Just want the stack to pot ratio is going to be getting closer and closer to one, so we don't really need to fast play or do anything too crazy. Um, if he has a flush draw, if you're thinking, oh, God, maybe we should blast him off, he's never folding anyway, so you may as well just call. Um, we hit the turn here, and again, I think I make the decision that it's just a case of the stack to pot ratio is really nice. We can just shove river if he decides to check again on the river to us. Um, yep, as it happens, he decides to shovel in. We snap call him with the essential nuts, 6-8 uh, obviously being the best possible ad. Uh, and we take him down and once again meme him with the goodbye because I'm just an absolute sicko these days apparently. Next hand now, Jack A of spades in the big blind. We see an open from the hijack. Looks like we're going to be getting a cheeky bit of family action. Uh, three of us to the flop. King, five, two, two spades. Lovely jubbly. Good flush draw for us. See a lead from the player on our right. We're obviously going to be calling, not going anywhere. Ka-ching. We hit the flush on the turn here. He goes for a check. Clearly busy playing on other tables at this moment in time. We go for a biggish sizing. Obviously hoping to uh, charge him if he has like the queen of spades, the ace of spades, anything like that that wants to um, come along for the ride. If he has a king, we obviously want to be charging him a lot for that. We're not blocking it naturally. So we go for a big sizing. And weirdly we get check raised here. Now alarm bells start going off in my head in this hand here because I couldn't really see what you would check raise with in this scenario other than a flush so um, and blocking like 8-9 of spades really isn't good in my opinion here and blocking like 8-7 those sort of super connectory hands that we want him to be having like 10-9 all that sort of stuff isn't possible so I really don't like the situation here but there was no way we can fold on the turn so we're going to be calling river comes down a blank six of hearts doesn't really change anything yeah you either have a better flush than me or you don't or you have like a set and you don't now have a full house, essentially. Um, but it is a really hairy spot, so we're not... If he's betting, we are very, very concerned. Essentially, he would have to be running a really crazy bluff. So when he shoves all in here, you have to remember the action that it was a raise from PFR. He called in the small blind. I called in the big blind. On the flop, he led out. I called the initial raise that folded. On the turn, he check raised me. And then on the river, he goes all in. I'm not buying it. Essentially, I'm not buying it in that I can't see how he has a flush that we are beating here. And I actually think it through for quite a long time and elect for the fold in the end. So that was one of those hands where I think I'm starting to make quite a lot of money by not losing the hands where I'm probably supposed to lose. I am probably supposed to lose that hand and lose every single penny. But I'm still sort of in a situation now where I'm like, I don't need to lose that money anymore. I've called there enough times and I've lost there enough times to know that. I'm never winning, so I just go for the fold here and feel like it's just an exploitative play. GTO definitely would never be folding there. It would just be calling it off 100%. Um, but myself, I'm going for an exploitative play there. I don't feel like these people in these state levels check raise the turn and smash the river all in with a bluff. Like, And that's essentially what a hand becomes there. It becomes a bluff catcher because there aren't that many weaker flushes, as said. So moving on to another hand here, we have the 10 8 of diamonds, going to be coming in for a 2.5x open from the cutoff, which is standard for us, sizings for us. We see a 3-bet coming out of the small blind. Uh, we've gotten tagged as a light blue, which typically means we think that they're quite tight, uh, mostly just playing value. Get a cold call of the 3-bet from the big blind, which is a little bit scary, but we will be calling that. Uh, we hit the absolute world here on this flop, and it's going to be very difficult for us. I think even when I was playing this hand, I turned to my partner and went, well, we're going broke in this hand, <laughs> uh, because essentially we have like everything. We can hit a jack, we can hit a six, we can hit a diamond. Like There's just so much going on for us that we could happily get this all in on this flop here. 
and be in pretty good shape even against like a set we wouldn't be in too bad shape um yeah so obviously we're not keen on doing that against a set we'd rather they had just a pair of queens um so he does decide to bet out here the guy that cold called the three bet which is very strong when you uh, decide to bet out into two other players um, with the preflop Razor obviously deciding to check here. We can't go anywhere. We've got such a massive hand. And this turn card is probably one of the worst possible turn cards that I can think of um, just because it means that anyone with a set is now beating us um, because they obviously now have a full house and we can't even draw to beat them now if they do have the um, full house, obviously. So... It's not a good card for us at all. Um, he decides to go for a really small sizing here. Now, this set, up, set off quite a few alarm bells in my head because I was like, well, why would you bet so small? Surely you're worried about me drawing for a flush. That was really, really concerning for me because it was like, why would you bet so small when you know I'm clearly drawing against you? It didn't make a lot of sense to me. And I was really, really suspicious at this point in this hand of what he could have. Yeah, but if I'm perfectly honest, it felt like he had sevens or nines. It just felt like, okay, what sort of hand would call a three bet, not four bet? Sevens or nines makes a lot of sense here. But then he checked to me on the river and it really did leave me like, oh God, what am I supposed to do here? I could so easily be missing out on value from a queen. Um, so we shove it in there and the alarm bells were right. He had two queens for the quads, which made perfect sense as to why he only cold called the three bet in the start. Um and then bet so small on the turn card because he felt that he'd hit the absolute world. And you could tell he just wanted to try and extract as much money as possible. If anything, if a diamond hit, he didn't mind. So it made a great deal of sense to me why he'd gone small. And I really wish my spider senses had played a better role. And we could have just checked that back and it would have been so awesome because we could have had him basically going, oh, I've made a big mistake here. Because he did. He played his hand atrociously. Um, no, make no mistake about it um, in the future maybe we should learn to read into our uh, tells a bit better because that was a huge one he gave to us on a turn there um, and the more uh, once again watching this hand over it makes me realize why he did that with queens because a lot of people don't like to four bet cold because it makes the hand look really strong um, which obviously it would have done but there you go uh, I think the hand overall is a case of like you can sort of just sort of shrug and go okay well we lost that one you can clearly see we're trying to make the most of some bad situations where we're trying to make money in these games by making folds where other people can't unfortunately we couldn't make this one but i don't think we can be blamed for value jamming there in my opinion there's just too much risk that he could have um just a simple queen and he have trip trip queens and he's never going to fold them to our shove so i think it's more than justified to um go for the jam there um especially as obviously the flush hadn't hit um if we'd hit our flush it probably would have been a bit easier for him to fold a queen but the actual nature of the fact we hit are straight just makes it so much less likely that he's ever going to just fold a just singular queen to us um and the potential full houses that he has with a queen plus another card would just i don't think he has any in terms of what would be um cold calling the action there like you know like king queen stuff like that queen jack stuff like that but he doesn't have any of those so as it happens we lost that one but that's just the way it goes this is going to be the end of the video guys i hope you've enjoyed the quick summary we did and just a quick few hands um, of what's been going on you can imagine i've played thousands so i've just selected these for you um a little bit of um me being a bit naughty with the goodbyes when we're clearly just crushing people and sending them to the showers and then some hands where we've made some tough folds um been put in some tough spots as well hope you enjoyed i'll catch you in the next video guys let's hope things keep going well in the 25 and l streets catch you later